How's it going everybody? This is Tallyzum762. Um, it's been a while since I made a video for you guys. Oh, here we go again. Um, so I just wanted to share something I've been working on lately. Just some updates on what I have. Um, so I just decided to make a little tabletop video for you guys. Um, what we see here in front of us is the one on top is the uh, my CZ Brin 805. Uh, SBR and uh, chamber in 556 and then on the bottom here we have my uh, Galileo Ace Gen 2 in chamber in 762 by 39 um, they both been SBR um, this is my two SBRs that I have right now but the one that I've been working on the most and used the most um, so let's just start off with the Galileo um, you guys probably seen me with this gone for quite a while now um i did when from when i first got it got it painted put on different things trying different things um i finally got to where i think it's gonna be working for me okay let's start from let's do a safety check first before anything Clear. Okay, so let's start from the front. Um, as you can see here, right now I have a uh, the Dead Air Pyro 2.0 with the chemo um, adapter. So I'm gonna take it off now. Um, so I went from the Xeno back to the chemo uh, brakes again. Uh, reason being is I have a. Suppressor might be coming up, coming up soon. When I do get it, well, I won't be able to just put it on and use it. So I did went back to the chemo because the one that I had purchased was uh, chemo compatible. Um, so I have the, the JMAC chemo RD2C uh, chemo muzzle brake with the two chamber. And then of course, um, for this being, such a short package, you know, a 762 by 39, and then this is an 8.5 inch barrel. This is pretty uh, flashy and concussive. So I usually don't, I don't plan on you running it with just the brake. That's why I use the pyro. Now the pyro has two functions. One is that it could be your uh, on-demand muzzle brake if you put on a, a 30 cal in cap, or like I did, which is, um, this is sec its second function it will be uh, a little flash can. So what you do is you drop in these this little uh, blast shield insert, drop it in instead of using the front cap, and now it is uh, a flash can. So to pair with your muzzle brake, it's you know what make what pushes your flash and uh, concussion the blast wave down range instead of the you know blast it on the side especially for short barrels. So you just, you know, put on the chemo here, tie it down, boom. And also just getting used to the way for having a extra device in the front of the gun. So when I do have a suppressor, I'm kind of used to weight balance, just you know, getting used to the weight. Okay, so back here, I didn't change anything. Well, I've been using the, uh, big shout out to uh, Slate Black Industries. They made this M-Lock uh, rail panel. I did paint it over. I can't remember what color I used, but I just painted with it. Um, same again. I, I used had a. Uh, I used their now the new their new forward grip too. Before I had this. Uh, I think of what I had. Oh, the uh, BCM gunfighter grip. Um, now they both work great, but the BCM is a little longer and a little thicker, and so when I do the reloads. Uh, with a magazine is always going to be in the way so this one it just it's just the perfect length it doesn't get in the way i mean it does hit it but it gave me a good reference point but it doesn't block it as much with the the bcm also it's a little sl slimmer see when i grab the gun it had plenty of room here so it's a little slimmer so i have my whole hand so i can grip it better now this is my other hand Okay. 
and I can still reach my light. Okay, and I have another rail panel here too on this side, a shorter one, so it gave me a little aggressiveness of holding on to it. And actually, let me grab a magazine real quick just to show you the how the magazine will, will, will lights up with it. Okay, so here I have a, a circle 10. Bulgarian circle tin waffle. So now it's, it's there. So when I do take it, it's a little bit, so if you get it, you know, it's a little bit there, but it's not gonna be interfering. If you just wanna do like a flop, it's not gonna be stuck in front of it. We're just like with the BCM, it's not having to get caught on it. And when you load it too, you can actually use it as a reference, which line it up your front the magazine. In there, oh, there. Let's see, good there. Okay, all right. So that's one thing that I changed. It was going back to this uh, a smaller profile grip, still a bird grip, but just you know a little slimmer. And uh, up on top, I. In the using the uh, Chart Industry Micro Battle Sight. Uh, the reason why I use a micro is that this is a little shorter, a smaller. Um, so with the height, usually it's, um, uh, let's say in an AR, your uh, your uh, stock usually lines up with your receiver or your rail. But while the AKs or the Galeos, um, or most AK patterns that you see how where the stock is like it's way down here. So the cheek well is gonna be kind of off. So if you use like a full height side, like let's see on my print here. See how high that is versus the micro. So the micro ones were designed to use um, uh, piston guns or guns that have a, a higher rail compared to a, a standard ARs. Um, so now with this, I can, I don't have to adjust my neck as much when I do go for the, for that, I don't know if you can see it. Oops, open my camera. So I wouldn't have to go as low to get that, uh, to use the iron sight. So it, it's just been more comfortable. And another thing is, which is brought to the optics, with using these micro ones, um, it will give me a lower one sir covenous if I use a, a absolute covenous mount. Um, keep that in mind that the absolute covenous that's meant to be, let's say, a standard AR height. Now with this sight, your absolute covenous will become one third just the way the, the rails works. But on the other hand, when I do go look at the red dots with this with my cheek here, this height, it's more comfortable at this height for the red dot. But in the meantime, if I wanted this, I do like one circle when it's better. So if I want to lower one third, I have to use a shorter sights. So, so that's why I end up using the short ones and the long ones, the micros versus the long, long ones, I mean, okay leave that on okay and okay so let's flip it over just go this way i'm using just a qd uh, swivel now the sling i'm using is the uh ferro concept mm. i like it because they match the color um actually i don't like the handle that much versus the uh like the blue force gear viker sling or let's say the magpul but you know, I'm trying different things. I'm just trying to get used to it. I mean, it does feels kind of clunky for having this uh, handle, um, but it's fast because it's longer. You can just grab it, grab it, and, and adjust your uh, length. Anyways, um, I right here I do have the light, the other uh, Streamlight Protect Rail Light, Rail Mount, whatever. Uh, it's the uh, I think it was the 500 lumen. Yeah, it gets the job done. Um, but the base I did going to the uh, air stock mount. See, this is the uh, AMLOC uh, offset mount. And 
this one versus the uh, the factory mount that came with the Streamline, it's a lot slimmer. You use less space, and it hugs to the gun, you know, more, uh, hugs to the gun more. You know, just stays closer. So it's giving me more room on my offhand, you know, putting my hands there, versus the old one. Um, well, not to mention the old one doesn't have an M log. It was actually a Picatinny. So I, I would either have to mount it here or get a Picatinny plate here, which just adds more space. And with this, I can literally hold my hands there. And if I want, I can just press it. Um, I'm actually debating if I should run on a pressure pad or not. Uh, giving this is, you know, only so much room that I can put on stuff on, on such a short rail. I actually haven't decided if I should do that or not. But right now, it's it seems to be working and it's a little clicky. I'm learning the, the clicky gangs instead of the pressure pad gangs like y'all. And it works. And I can hold my hand there while I'm holding on the rifle. All right. Uh, I believe they do make a Galil version now for an Arasaka that, that hugs to the to the handguards even better. But this is what work. I'm, I'm still not. If it works, just you know, why bother changing it? So it's working for me. All right. So optic, I got rid of the Hollow Suns, and I'm in the using a MRO. And with the Miss West Industry co witness mount, absolute co witness mount, the QD mount. So the QD gave me access to taking it on and off. When I do need to clean it, I can just take that off and clean it instead of leaving it on there or having to uh, untie it, unloosen it, loosen it down and take it. This the QD, you know, it's a fast, you just press it, release a little lever, and it comes right off and it holds zero. Um, instead of going from uh, Hollow Sun to the Tragic uh, MROs, is because. Uh, I want something a bit more, let's say, um, battle proven. You know, it's MROs has been, well, I shouldn't say battle proven because, you know, we're not going to war or anything, but something that's been proven, it's durability and um, better life. I'm not saying the Hollow Sun's bad or anything. It just, if I were to use this as a um, home defense gun, I want something that it's been proven itself. Um, so I end up going to the, the, the MROs versus the Hollow Sun. So my Hollow Sun, I still have them. I just use them, let's say if I go to like a, a range trip or just use in like a quick competition or a match or just have fun, and that's what I use. But for something that I'm gonna keep on my best side, this is what I'm gonna depend on. Um, I heard a battery life on these, you can last for three, four years, five years without changing it on the the middle setting so and i, I like it I like, it's only a, has a, such a good view let <laughs> me uh, see here such a oh here you can see that oh I keep touching the camera the big field of view as i'm trying to say yeah i have not turned it on but you know just try to show it um other than that um didn't change much anything else just just put a stupid rubber band so i can uh put the sling right here because i don't want it to swing around too much um yeah so that's just been some little update on the galio for you now oh, let's talk about the brand something i always wanted to show you guys but never had a chance to and now here we are Safety check. Clear. Okay. So, where do I start? Now, when I first purchased it, it was a pistol, of course, it has like a SP tactical brace. Uh, but I was able to find the uh, the Bryn, CZ Bryn 805 stocks available on their website. So I, I bought one. I um, think it's pretty cool. My folds. Press right there. I uh, keep shaking the camera. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so it's adjustable for four positions, but it's for it being already this long. I don't usually adjust it. This is actually pretty long. It's comfortable for me, and it comes with a little cheek rise. I can take it off if you want. Um, it's or you can switch sides if you're left-handed, right-handed. You know. Okay, so 
let's start from the front again. <laughs> I know we start with, well, you know what? We already started from the back. Let's just start from the back because we're already talking about the stock. Um, again, the tri sites, this is the regular height, not the micro. So it, it it's, it's a little higher than the other one. So with the optic, of course, you see the EOTech. I'm using the, the EXPS 3.0. Um, it has uh, come with it, it has that uh, lower one third co witness. So with this, I was able to achieve lower one third co witness. Uh, you can see there. Yeah, a little bit, but yeah, you get the point. Okay, again, um, I think I had like a Premier Arms uh, 3X, a 1X, I'm sorry, but I decided to go something a little bit more proven. Let's see here, a Yotech, and then, you know, the color matches better. Just make it a little more heavier, but it's it's not bad. Um, so yeah, the Eotech EXPS 3.0, the QD. Uh, down here, I did upgrade the charging handle. This is the KNS Position uh, charging handle. It has the uh, similar like a downward angle. So what it is is the the, the factory one that came with the gun it was a little too small and also straight. So when I do charge it, some of my hands gets on the, the optic there. So with this downward ones, your hands will be right here, so you're not touching it. And also it has a bigger knob, so it gives you a better grab when you do charge it. Okay, and so that's a little upgrade that I did. Okay, up here we have, it's also Kin Nets Precision uh, Amlock Handguard for the Burn 805. Um, believe it or not, there's literally no parts for these guns kind of thing because they were discontinued for so long so i was so lucky i was actually able to find a blim a blemished uh tangar rail uh, m locks actually i wanted a picatinny but it didn't have any i think the only thing they have left is key mods so I'm, i don't have any key mod accessories so i didn't go with the key mod on this side i didn't change it this is the stock see you can see what it looked like it looks like smooth i don't know what this is for but but there's no no accessory uh no parts for you to mount anything so you have to get it changed out to uh an m lock or a picatinny so i ended up getting the m lock and up here um again this is uh yeah the air socket uh, m lock uh, inline mount for the uh, scale pro series uh, so it has this uh, part where you can actually move the lights based on your needs. So that's one thing about the Pro Series that give you that uh, option to move the light, to adjust uh, the distance of the light where you want it to be, the position. Okay, so with this um, versus the factory, again, versus the factory is like, give me more room, it's more slim, uh, slimmer. And I can put my hands there. I can do the C-clamp if I want to. Or I can just hold on to it, and if I need to grab back and push with my thumb, it, it is right there. Okay, and down here we have again the BCM um, gunfighter grip. Um, this is the uh, slightly tilted version, so you can see there's a little um, it's sideways it's tilted to the back, and you can flip it around to the other way. Actually, I find this to be more comfortable. Well, I'm still trying that out. I kind of like this, but on my other guns. Um, one of my AKs actually have it the other way around, so it looks like a, it feels like a down, like a Romanian down hangar. Uh, right now it seems working just fine, so let's try it out the, the, the other way, see how I like it. Okay, and that's that in the front. Another chemo, this is the uh, chemo 3 prong flash hider. Yeah, um, just getting ready for my Sandman suppressor. Uh, or I can run the, what do you call it, the pyro if I wanted to which is I have, um, I, I, when I do run on this, I use it as the, uh, the brake. So I, I take out the insert and put on the in cap on it. Okay. Now, um, one thing interesting about the brand is that it has this adjustable gas setting. Now you have two settings. Um, on, so you have a uh, regular and a, uh, and an adverse. So adverse is used when you have the gun being foul or not being clean or in the back weather conditions, you want to just give it extra gas to make it run, to make it properly uh, pre uh, 
cycles you put that high setting but on that it doesn't really have any other uh, my hand never had to use the high setting I just or the adverse setting I just always run a normal um, I wish there was a suppressor setting but um, good thing about the, this is that you can actually get a different gas regulator or the little cap so I end up finding one that kind of becomes my suppressor setting there so let me just show you guys let me take this off Let's see if I can get this off here get it out yeah okay here we go okay so see, let me grab the one okay so this is the one you can see on the screen there you see so you see right there it says 223 remington now this is the one i just took it out of the ground this is the one i actually purchased on the site from the cz website um so just take a look at the size of that gas port right there okay now this is the one i purchased on the side put it down here for a second now this is the one that came with the gun from the factory, the original gas regulator. You see there it says 5.5, 5.56 times 45. And this actually has to, the two gas thing that I was talking about. So you have your, uh, yeah. So this is the regular or normal setting. And this is your adverse. See how big the port is versus the regular. And you have the, the indicators are this is a regular, this is for adverse. Um, so if you compare to the one I buy and separate on the gas ports, so this is the 223, the one I purchased on the side, and this is the factory one. Adverse, normal. Yeah, this one doesn't even have adverse, it just had one setting. Um, but you see it's how the sides are so different. So. I would say accidentally <laughs> I discovered it this becomes a source setting let's say suppress even unsuppress you can run it runs so I don't even use the factor anymore because you know it, it just makes it more over gas I, I I leave it out I don't really use it I put it in a little bag and put it in my range bag but I run I just run this one mainly the two to three because it just that different size makes so much different all right, that's not even the adverse, it's just the normal. And it makes it really smooth. There's literally no recoil. And if you're running, let's say, a, a steel case ammo, it's like shooting 22s. Um, now, you can you can still run 5.56 NATO in the gun. It will, it will function. I mean, it's just give you less gas. So most of the gas just bleeds out the front. And you just need so, so little to recycle the gun. And this does it. And I actually got a chance to try this with a suppressor, with a Salmon S. I don't even notice any difference as with a suppressor and without. So, well, I'm actually very excited to, to get my suppressor to run, run it on, uh, run it more to feel the difference. Um, but I think this is, will be a great um, suppressor setting. It's a great, you know, I actually, I would just I was just browsing through the CZ uh, USA website, see any spare parts I can find for this gun, and I come across this. Um, so in theory, you you would think, okay, Ram two to three going to be smaller, and then I was true, I was right. So I purchased it, brought it, and when I got it, I compared the sizes. I was like, I was like, oh my god. So, got to run this. Okay, so this is one interesting I discovered about this brand. Um, um i guess i kind of want to go through history with these guns but i don't have a whole lot of time and i want to it's already been a very long video as it is so i don't want to take you guys such a long time but um this was adopted in the chess military after the vz58 they, they adopted this and then they move on to the brand 2 which is what they use now um, so these kind of washed away but there was you know when i see one on the market i jump on it as soon as i see one you don't see these uh, 
a lot very uh, very often nowadays. Uh, the controls are very similar to ARs. Uh, you have your mag release. Mm, this is the bow lock. It doesn't have a bow release, it just locks it. To release it, you just press the charging handle and it'll release it. So it feels like AK for the most part, or a, a Galeo, uh, you know. And this being a short stroke piston gun, it just make me more interested because I, I love uh, piston guns. Short stroke, long stroke, you name it, you know. Um, your, this is your safety. It's also ambi, so you have one on this side too. All right, and there's the two takedown pins. You take it out, the lower comes out, and this buffer spring was in there. I'm not going to do a, a, a the symbol video. Um, I'm sure somebody on YouTube had already done many, many uh, videos about how to disassemble these guns. But I just want to share what have I done to it and what I discover with this gun. And, oh, actually, one thing I kind of want to talk about is that the couple of things I didn't like the gun is because uh, when they designed it, that was in an era where QDs wasn't being a big thing at the time. Or just, there's not really a QD anywhere for you to mount QD swivels for your slings. Like, I had, it has this... The piston to keep sliding out. It has this sling loop, as you call it. One in the front, one, well, I mean, a set in the front, a set in the back. So I, I just run some cords and I looped it with my sling. I have those ones with hooks and a hook on there. Um, there's nothing like that on the stock either. So I wish there was at least uh, maybe, you know, uh, a little swivel here. It would have been nice, or a little loop here that I could put a sling through instead of having to be right here because I don't like them being here. I like them more towards the boss stock. I mean, that's the only thing I don't like about this gun. Other than that, this is a perfect gun for me. I don't mind it doesn't have a bow release. I, mean, I'm more sh I shoot mostly AKs anyway, so I never had a bow release. Uh, last round bow open, whatever, you know, I don't care. Um, and also, yeah, I wish there was more parts support for, for these guys. Um, so there's, if you find anything for these, I mean, if you have one of these guns and then you find any part that you can for it, I would say just get it because you you will never see them again. So if you have a spare part or anything broke, uh, you won't be able to find them because they don't make them. All right, so that's all I want to talk about today. And then hopefully I can make another video soon for you guys in the range. And with some more stuff that I have coming up too. Okay, so until next time, guys. Um, see ya. Bye.